Hey everybody, KC here. So I was reading an interesting article on the Taste website and the title was a little provocative. It's called The Death of Fancy Ketchup. And a paste, uh, I learned a lot of stuff in this story. First of all, did you know that it wasn't until 1812 that we had tomato ketchup in the U.S.? Uh, but it, ketchup had uh, existed in various forms for centuries uh, all over the world. But it was never made from tomatoes. This was a kind of a unique thing. Um, and the story points out that by the 20th century, basically, ketchup meant one thing. Um, and it was essentially one brand, that brand has a market share of something like 60%. Um, and then the story says to Scott Norton, Mark Ramadan, Brandon Child, and Wynn Bennett, uh, who in the spring of 2008 were seniors at Brown University, they decided what they wanted to do was they wanted to break up what they called the monopoly and the monotony of Tynes tomato ketchup. So they launched something called Sir Kensington's Ketchup. That was in 2010 in both spicy and regular flavors. And it was described as a deep and fudgy maroon. This ketchup was thicker, more opaque, and seasoned with a hint of allspice. Unlike Heinz, which is akin to, to getting toothpaste in its consistency, it wasn't completely smooth. It tasted more concentrated, yet less sweet. A little went a longer way. Whereas you wouldn't think twice about smothering your french fries in Heinz, uh, Sir Kensington's flavor was more tomatoey thanks to using a combination of tomato paste and crushed tomatoes rather than only tomato paste like Heinz. This, among other reasons, the story says, made their product more expensive to produce than Heinz, the largest being the difference in scale of operations for a startup compared uh, to a food conglomerate that had been making ketchup for over 150 years. Another difference was high fructose corn syrup. Uh, Sir Kensington's didn't have that and made a big deal of that when it launched. A lot of people uh, don't want to have uh, high fructose corn syrup. Alas, now, 2023, Sir Kensington's ketchup is no more. Uh, the brand was bought by Unilever in 2017, but while they're going to continue to make other things like mustards and a chipotle mayonnaise, they're not going to make any Sir Kensington's ketchup anymore. Um, and they're not alone in making that decision. There's another brand out there called Brooklyn Deli, which made a curry ketchup. And that's also uh, going away. They're just unable to compete in a very monolithic ketchup marketplace. Now, while Heinz ketchup hasn't changed much in 150 years, it has launched some variations. Uh, the story points that it now sells both organic ketchup and a ketchup with no sugar added. And last month, they introduced three new varieties of ketchup with various kinds of spiciness. The idea of this is going to appeal to both Gen Xers and to Millennials. But also not just them. I would include baby boomers in that, in that group. Part of the reason that I was intrigued by this story is I'm a huge Sir Kensington ketchup fan. Um, I basically brought it into the house and tried to get rid of the Heinz ketchup because I, I wanted to get rid of the high fructose corn syrup. Mrs. Content Guy, not so much. She insisted on the Heinz. Uh, but I did convince my kids. I liked the idea that it didn't taste like traditional ketchup. I liked that, the idea that it had a somewhat different, different consistency. And I gotta be honest, the taste story sort of made me sad. Now, I understand market forces. I understand when things can't, you know, can't survive in the market. They're going to go away. Um, uh, and even if they're different, even if they're better. Um, now, I'm glad that Heinz is gonna put some new varieties out there. Uh, I'm willing to give them a, sh a shot. I'm also a big fan of sriracha ketchup. When there was a sriracha shortage that was being rumored, I bought a bunch of it just to be just in case. I didn't want to not have sriracha ketchup in the house. Um, but now, taste tells me, uh, there's going to be another product that I need to look out for. It's made by True Made Foods, which has no added sugar, and in lieu of sugar has a blend of fruits and vegetables in addition to tomatoes, apples, carrots, and winter squash. Now, founder Abe Kamarek uh, seems to have learned the lesson of Sir Kensington's. He says, we're not trying to reinvent the flavor. We're just trying to reinvent the ingredients. If I can't fool my kids into eating it, I'm not going to make it. Now, like I said, I understand market forces, but I just don't have to like them. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.